Welcome to 15 Minutes with Longevity. My name is Giselle Wertheim Ames and I'll be your host for today. On today's show, we'll be speaking to Daniel Maresfield. He's a molecular biologist as well as the founder and CEO of DIN Analysis. And we'll be talking about how genetic testing can help us make better lifestyle choices. Daniel, thanks very much for joining us in the studio today. Pleasure, thanks for having okay, well, me. First, we're gonna talk about the whole idea of genes and, and DNA. Perhaps you can just explain what it is because I mean, we often talk about we blame everything on our genes. I mean, it's always great, you know, if we've got a problem, especially if we're overweight or we don't do, we're not that clever or we're brilliant. The other way we say, it's because of my father or because of my mother or my grandfather. Yeah, it's certainly something that's very easy to make as an excuse, is that it's in your genes and there's nothing you can do about it. And certainly in some cases that is true. But when it comes what to... What are those cases, by the way? Well, they were talking about the, um, the what we call high penetrance genetic diseases. So if we look at just look at obesity as an example, there's only about 5% of, of the time where it is a genetic obesity and there's very little that you can do on a lifestyle side or a nutrition side to actually curtail that. No, oh, really, I think that's going to really disturb a lot of people <laughs> because that's, well, that's exactly, we use that as often as the excuse. 100%. Yeah. It means that 95% of the time it's largely in your own hands irrespective of what your parents might have looked like. So rather than use it as an excuse, what we try and do is use genetics as a tool to empower the individual or empower the medical practitioner to understand their, their patient or to understand themselves that much more and to make the appropriate lifestyle dietary interventions in order to be it reduce our risks for disease or assist with our weight loss, improve our fitness, whatever the goal might be. And I mean, just to explain DNA or the function of DNA, could you explain that in the... In the DNA in short is the, the building block of of life. Um, every single one of the cells in our body contains approximately three billion chemical bases, which is called our genetic code. And on this genetic code con um, are found the 20,000 odd genes which determine who we are. Every single function that happens in our body, what we look like, the way we metabolize foods, our eye color, hair color, all a function of these genes that we carry. Uh, the information that came out of the Human Genome Project was fascinating because what it told us is how very small genetic differences between individuals, just single letter spelling changes in our genes, can have a profound effect on the way in which that gene functions. So if we're looking, for example, at, at an enzyme that has a critical role to play in metabolizing a nutrient, just a single spelling change in one individual can reduce the functioning of that enzyme by about 50%. Um, knowledge of that allows us to then up the nutrient that we are supposed to be metabolizing because we're clearly not getting enough of it due to the malfunctioning enzyme. Okay. So what we specialize in at the analysis is looking at genes that where the effects is modifiable through the appropriate diet or lifestyle intervention. So environment in this instance is going to play quite a lot of influence and your tests are really helping people understand how they interact with the environment and what they're consuming and how the two yeah. really interface with each other. Exactly. There's an expression that we use quite a lot, which is that your genes might load the gun, but it's the lifestyle that pulls the trigger. Okay. So taking the inverted commas bad genes, but in, in a good environment, and the effect is not going to be nearly as significant as if the, if the environment are all negative triggers. Um, the whole point is you can't change the genes, but you can change the environment in which you place yourself. So it's looking at how the, the effects of these genes can be modified through external factors and lifestyle choices. Okay. Um, I'm very interested in the concept. I mean, at the moment, everyone is looking at proactive health and preventative health. And obviously the whole issue around gene testing is becoming um, very kind of media friendly. I mean, everywhere you read, you read about go get your genes tested. But there's obviously a big difference between the kind of tests you're doing and the kind of tests, for example, and Angelina Jolie had for her breast cancer, which is a BRCA yeah. gene test. Yeah. Do you want to just talk a little bit about that again, understanding that not all gene tests can be the same? It's very important to understand that distinction. Um, I mentioned earlier high penetrance genes, and similarly we look at the low penetrance genes. Mm -hmm. High penetrance genetic test is, where, is the, the type of test that Angelina Jolie did, the BRCA gene. Uh, carriers of that mutation, there's, I think it's an upwards of 90% chance that breast cancer will manifest. Um, not a huge amount that can be done on the lifestyle side. Obviously, there are always 
dietary, nutrition, lifestyle interventions, but it seems to be quite a common uh, decision now to go the route that, that Angelina Jolie did go. Um, if it's a 90% chance that the breast cancer will manifest, but only about 5% of all breast cancers are as a result of the BRCA gene mutation. So similarly, so as with obesity, there are so many cases with, with obesity, with breast cancers or other cancers where it's low penetrance genes mm -hmm. that in themselves are not enough to cause the disease, but will predispose to the disease, okay. increase the risks which then in combination with, for example, smoking or being overweight, sedentary lifestyle, all of these cumulative risk factors increase your chances for eventually manifesting the disease state. Okay, so really what you're doing is you're preparing a person, you're saying, this is what your body, in terms of your gene makeup is, and the kind of factors that you're looking at from your test, your particular company, because I mean, obviously other companies will do different things, is, I mean, you specifically, I understand looking in the area of diet, fitness, you look at estrogen levels, if I'm not mistaken. So again, how do these, why are these particular categories mm. in the context of a greater health environment? We've got, we've got four tests. I'll just tell you briefly what, what the different tests are. Um, as you mentioned, the one is specifically geared for weight loss. So it's genes that are involved in how you metabolize fats, how you metabolize carbohydrates, how responsive you are to exercise. The whole point of that test is to answer the question, which is the right diet type for you? rather than the sort of um, I know, this is a really habit interesting of thing jumping from one Exactly, type people to think another. that, you know, I think it's a kind of common acceptance that that diet that they read in a magazine or they see on TV or they've heard about is yeah. going to work for them. Exactly, and because it's worked for their sister or their friend. Exactly. Um, but the point is we are all different and we, we know but intuitively. But are we that different, Dan? I mean well, well, we know intuitively and mm. we've seen it all the time that, that what works for one person will not work for another. Um, it might be, not be that it doesn't work, but maybe it doesn't work as quickly. So they, they've got these certain genetic barriers to overcome when it comes to weight loss, that the weight loss might be slower than they would like. Having that information up front and understanding that is, is very helpful because the one thing without doubt that is going to lead to weight loss is compliance with the program that you're on. And the worst thing you can do is become disheartened with it or disenchanted when you're not seeing the results as quickly as, as you would like or as your friends saw the results. So understanding that, understanding how important exercise is as opposed to just diet, um, understanding whether it should be a, a lower fat or a low carbohydrate that, that you should be focusing on, these are all useful bits of information that either you or your dietitian could use to guide your weight loss process. So just tell me, so you, you, do, you do the diet, you do the exercise, estrogen? Levels? Estrogen looks at the pathways uh, that metabolize estrogen. Okay. Estrogen, if it is not properly cleared from the body, becomes carcinogenic. The breakdown products become uh, carcinogenic, so it becomes a risk for cancers, okay. breast and prostate cancer specifically. Um, so our estrogen test is available only through medical doctors okay. who are working in the space of, of hormones and uh, women who are going into hormone replacement therapy who have been on oral contraceptives a long time understanding what their breast cancer risks might be and making management recommendations around around their lifestyle and incorporating the genetics into that. Because I think you touched on a very important subject there. I mean, this whole issue around genetic tests again and who does them. Okay, so in your specific instance, you have a combination of the two because there is a test that I can do. I mean, it's a bit like CSI. You just swap your mouth with, you know, it looks like cotton, a very, a very sophisticated <laughs> cotton bud, but, and send, you know, put it in a package and send it off. Mm. Um, you know, you kind of kind of think, well, what if the results are really bad and that person gets really depressed and, you know, is not able to manage that because they, they've got this kind of sort of online yeah. relationship. Um, and then, of course, there are tests that absolutely cannot be conducted in such a way. And surely this is like quite a, uh, I mean, it's a very interesting area to debate the kind of ethics around all of this. So there are a whole lot of questions in there mm. <laughs> that can be answered. What I'll start with is the aspect of getting a negative result. Because of the nature of these tests, where we're not saying to you, this is the hand that you've been dealt, sorry for you. What we're saying is, look, these are the genetics and these are where your risks lie or where your, yeah, your, your concerns might lie, but here is what you can do about it. So it all becomes about the management. So I said earlier that your genes can't change, but the effect of the genes can change. And we limit ourselves to those genes where a dietary or a lifestyle intervention can modify the effect okay. of the gene. So there's always going to be something you can do about the information that you get, which means it's always 
a positive aspect. Um, in terms of the direct-to-consumer approach versus practitioners, we set up three years ago as a direct-to-consumer company. We learned very quickly that the medical practitioner has a hugely important role to play in how these tests are managed and how the, the information is interpreted. But unfortunately, the vast majority of, of doctors in the country would not have received training in genetics and especially low penetrance genetic testing such as the types we work with. So we offer our own training and accreditation program. Any practitioner wanting to work with our tests, they'll do training through us. Um, we do lectures, we do training seminars, we've got distance learning courses to get practitioners trained to manage and work with the tests in their practice. And to date we've had, I think it's upwards of 300 or 350 practitioners who've gone through this training process and many of those are now incorporating the routine testing into their practices. Mm -hmm. um, the people who do do it through the website is still available online. We do stress that it's not as effective. There are people out there who want to do it themselves, manage the information themselves. We do try and push them to a medical sure. practitioner to just get that added value out of the test. Now, I mean, one of the other issues that I think is quite important, I mean, these tests aren't really inexpensive. I mean, they are quite costly. Um, so medical aids not covering tests like this? Unfortunately not at the mm -hmm. moment. Uh, medical aids are certainly is a movement to embracing the concept of prevention. Um, and this fits very nicely into that space, but at the moment the tests aren't covered. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what um, re real benefits and kind of, kind of some of the interesting findings that come out of some of these tests. So you mentioned earlier on that you can't blame your weight on, on your parents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm really interested in how you test what is the right exercise for you, for example. I mean, what do you kind of see the, in the The exercise the test we launched a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. so towards the end of last year, we launched uh, DNA Fit, and the three useful sections to the report, the kind of information that you're getting. First of all, we tell you where you fall onto the power versus endurance spectrum. Okay. So it's, it's not about telling you what sport you should be doing, it's really about how you could optimize your oh, training. So I can't blame that on. I can't, no, I can't say the gene test either. that I can only do yoga. <laughs> is there running for me? <laughs> well, come no, on. <laughs> but you might find that it's, oh. it's genetically more suited okay. to you, that you've got that endurance yes, um, okay. potential. Look, you know, there's a very fine line. Most sports you'll find there's a mixture of power and endurance. Yeah. Um, even long distance running, there's going to be a big power component to it. But in terms of how you focus your training efforts, uh, people are out there training for the 94-7 now, for example, you'll find the vast majority of them are simply on the road doing yeah. hundreds of kilometers a week. A lot of those guys will have excellent power potential and time spent in the gym or doing sprints, high intensity power type training could see them g okay. get more benefit yes, get on the bike. The yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating stuff. I can't wait to be tested and, and have a look at my results, Daniel. Thank you very much for joining us in the studio. That's Pleasure. all the time we have for today. Stay well, be healthy, and I'll see you here next week for your dose of health news. Good night.